Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo, and today we'll be taking a look at the 65-inch 4K Ultra HD powered by Android TV from Kaisen. So if you're not familiar with the brand of Kaisen, they've been around for over 20 years in design and manufacturing of smart digital products, including TVs and digital signage. They have their own manufacturing facilities in four continents, shipping in over 60 countries, and an official partnership with Google with Android TV. So the E-Series of Kaisen has metallic material, so you have that premium design and appearance with slim bezels. You also have HDR10 and Dolby Audio. Now that you have the official Android TV, you have voice control by Google Assistant with the remote control. You have Google play so you have a ton of content you also have youtube netflix pre-installed and a wide range of tv sizes available from 24 32 48 50 55 65 and 75 on the back of the tv you'll find your LAN port your digital optical the headphone jack you have hdmi 1 and 2 as well as hdmi arc you have your regular components as well as two usbs now because this tv is a 65 inch tv it has 4k and hdr 10 watching 4k content just looks so refreshing so good and you just can't help but feel immersed now, because this TV has the Google Play Store installed, if you need to download any other applications, just simply do a search and you get all of this at a great cost at $659.99. Now, Kaisen is sponsoring this video. They were kind enough to send off this TV for an honest review. And so I've been using this TV for about seven to 10 days now, watching Netflix and Hulu, watching YouTube and listening to music, playing games, watching Disney Plus, all of this stuff here because it is powered by Android TV. And it also has built in Google as well as Chromecast. Now, the thing I like about this TV, I'm gonna go with a lot of the positives first, and then we'll go to just two negatives. And they're really not that big of negatives, but I know that they're areas of improvement. So first off, when it comes down to this TV, the user interface is really easy to use and you don't have another dongle or another attachment connected to the TV, which is also taking up one of the HDMI inputs. Now, the first time that you turn on your TV, you plug it in, it's gonna go through the setup process. And one of the times you will have to have your cell phone with you. So this way you can log in and you're able to share your Gmail with the TV since it is all powered by Android TV. So this way you're logged in with your Google, you're logged in so you can see all of your uh, subscriptions on YouTube, all the musics and playlists you've saved on Google Play and everything else. Then once you have everything set up, let's just take a look at the user interface. Now, if at any point in time in this video, you guys are curious on the Kaisen TV, you guys wanna check it out on Amazon or their website, I'll be placing their links below the video inside of the description. So here is the user interface that you are greeted with. This is the first thing that'll pop on once you have your TV set up. So here's all of your favorite applications and you can add more if you want to just by hitting on this plus button. So you can add in, you know, Disney Plus, Facebook Watch, Hulu, all of the Google Play services, so the games, the music, the store, and also if you have any games on here, uh, you are also able to attach more accessories. Uh, so you can take a look at keyboards and remotes. Then you have your Play Next. This is just an area based off of suggestions that you're able to watch or more specifically resume watching if you didn't finish it. And a lot of these are from Disney+. Plus. Then here is all of your Google Play. This is the app's spotlight. So if there's more applications that you wanted to log in with. So all of these, you do have to have a service. So if you have Disney Plus, you just wanna make sure you have the, uh, the subscription service for Disney Plus. Same thing with HBO Max. Once you log into those, you have access. Here's Play Music. So this is gonna be a lot of the recommended playlists based off of your Gmail that you logged in with. Then you also have TED Talks. Uh, here's Facebook Watch, here's Spotify, Disney Plus, YouTube. So you can go through everything that would be on your regular cell phone every single day you wake up. You'll be taking a look at everything also on the TV. Uh, here's Netflix, YouTube TV. And you can see the list just kind of goes on and on. You can also customize these channels as well. Now, if you move over to this icon, if there's any of these that you would like to move, you can actually just hit the over arrow one more time you're able to click on the up and the down. So this way you can just fully customize the look of your TV. So if you notice that you are not really a big user of Facebook Watch, simply tap on that, bring it all the way down. You can keep it there. So this way it's still on the screen, but it's not as you know uh, important on this list as you scroll on down. So YouTube TV is something that I watch all the time. So I'm gonna leave it right here. Now let's move all the way back up to the very top. Now on the very top, this is where you can press on the enter button on your remote if you wanna speak. There is a dedicated button for Google. So this way you don't have to say, you know, hey Google or anything like that. You can actually just hit on the dedicated button. You can ask it to play uh, whatever you want off of Netflix, YouTube. You can ask it simple questions like, 
weather and uh, what is one plus one. This is also an area that you're able to type in if you don't wanna speak. Here's all of your different inputs. Here's how you're connected to Wi-Fi and then also the settings. So taking a look at the settings menu really fast, you're gonna see that this is gonna be different than the normal settings of any other TV because this is all powered by Android TV. So this is where you're able to connect to your Wi-Fi. This is where you can look at some channels. This is where you log in with your accounts. You can take a look at more apps. So if you wanted to go through, you can take a look at what was used, when it was used, um, device preferences, remotes and accessories. Now underneath device preferences, Inside of here, this is where you'll see a lot of things for the TV itself, like the about. You can change the date and time. You can put on a timer, the language. You can change the keyboard. Here's all of your different inputs. If you wanna take a look at all the inputs that you have on your TV. Uh, so you have HDMI one, two, and three, as well as the composite. Uh, down over here, you have HDMI control. You have TV auto power on. So actually when I turn on uh, my receiver, it'll turn on the TV. Uh, then you also have the power. You can take a look at your picture settings, the sound settings. You can take a look at the storage, your home screen. You can go into retail mode, which I wouldn't suggest, your Google Assistant, the Chromecast, which is built in. You can take a look at your settings for screensaver, location, usage diagnostics. I mean, there's a lot going on in that area. For remotes and accessories, this is where you can add in different accessories. So this right here, uh, the remote that comes with the TV, Initially, it is infrared, so you have to point the remote at the TV, uh, but once you actually go through the Bluetooth setup, which is gonna be, I believe, the back button and volume down, you can add this remote as an accessory. So this way you don't have to point the remote at the TV for it to work. Now, talking about the remote right here, you have a bunch of different dedicated buttons. You have a dedicated button for Netflix. You also have a dedicated button for YouTube, and then also that dedicated button for your Google Assistant. So this way, all you would have to do is just press on the Google button right here, speak into the mic, and you just say, uh, what is the weather today? In Shawnee today, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 51 and a low of 48. Right now, it's 48 degrees and cloudy. Or you can ask it more complicated requests. So you can just press the button, play Stranger Things on Netflix. Sure, opening Netflix. So here we are at the point in the video where I wanna give you guys my honest review, my honest opinion. After using the Kaisen 65 inch TV for about seven or eight days now, and I'm gonna keep it very quick and simple and to the point. So first off, when it comes down to the display, this one is a 4K Ultra HD HDR10. Uh, so when you see those words, you have an expectation and that's exactly what you get. So this is the resolution that you are expecting. So it looks really good, it doesn't matter where you sit, I've walked up to the TV very close, I've walked back to the door, I've sat here, I've sat at different angles and it looks really good. So no matter which room you put it in, you're gonna get a really good experience with the display. Then when it comes down to the sound, this one has Dolby Audio. So I do have to give you guys a heads up, I'm used to having surround sound systems, big surround sound sound bars, receivers with big speakers. So this one does sound really good with the Dolby Audio. I feel that because of the size of the TV, I feel that they can maybe put just a little bit more sound inside of it. So it sounds good, the Dolby Audio is there. I just wish there was a little bit more power behind the, the speakers, maybe a couple extra wattage, but that's just room for improvement for the company of Kai Sun. But for the room that it sits in, you're gonna be perfectly fine. You can turn it up, you can turn it down. It's gonna fill the entire space. I just wish there's a little bit more but it is definitely adequate. It'll do everything that you need it to do. It's always gonna sound good. Um, this just comes from the ears of somebody always using sound systems and sound bars. So for the first about three or four days, I kept it with the normal audio of the TV. Then I plugged it into my receiver so I can get the sound that I'm used to. Now the next very important thing is that this one is powered by Android TV, has Chromecast built in, has the Google Assistant. So this is really easy to use. So I can purchase this for my parents and I would feel completely comfortable with them knowing exactly what to do, setting it up, signing in and going through all this stuff. I also very, I feel very comfortable giving it to my son. So if I was to go out there and purchase uh, another one of these TVs here, I'd probably get a 32 inch or maybe a 40 inch, put it in his room because he's used to using smartphones and tablets. And so this is perfect for him. And me, I'm in my thirties. This user interface is so easy. Uh, you have all the different applications. If you're used to using a phone or a tablet, this is gonna be super simple and easy for you to use. 
Everything is logged in, so I have no complaints when it comes down to the Android TV, no complaints with the user interface. You just go inside of the settings and then you can take a look at the settings of the TV, like the sources, the inputs, uh, the volume and settings and everything like that. So that's gonna be normal. So Android TV is super simple to use. The Chromecast feature is also very simple to use. Anything you have on your cell phone, you can easily just connect to the same Wi-Fi network. You know, do uh, the Chromecast button, cast it to the TV, it looks good. Uh, all the, the quality is there. Same thing with the Google Assistant, ask it any questions open up certain shows within Netflix or, or certain shows inside of Disney Plus, listening to a certain song by a certain artist with Google Play Music. So using all of this is really easy. So we talked about the display, the audio, and the user interface. Now let's talk about the remote. The remote is really nice. I like the dedicated buttons of Netflix and YouTube, the Google Assistant. And also too, when you first unbox the TV, it's infrared. So you have to point the remote at the TV just as normal. But once you pair it up with the with Bluetooth LE, which is Bluetooth Low Energy, you're actually attaching it as a Bluetooth accessory. You can point it anywhere in the room and it reacts with the TV, which is also super nice. Now the area of improvement is I wish that there was like a backlight on this. I kind of wish that there's a little bit of LEDs or light or something illuminating, letting me know, you know, what these buttons are. So this way, if it's a dark room, then I know exactly what I'm touching. So this one is a blank space in the dark. You have to shine a phone at it if you're watching it at nighttime. Um, and also too, these buttons right here, Uh, I'm pretty sure you probably heard that. They're pretty clicky, they're pretty loud, and that makes the remote kind of seem cheap. But it's not a cheap remote. Even though there's no LED, this is a pretty nice Bluetooth remote that is paired with your TV that is very responsive, but it's the clickiness that makes it feel cheap and sound cheap. Now the buttons on the top, the, the ones, the fives, the, the number lines, the forward, the reverse, the next, all of these are quiet, soft touch buttons, and I like that. So room of improvement, the remote, add in LEDs, add in a little bit of light so we know what we're touching and have all of the soft touch buttons be for all of them. Unless if you prefer that, that clickability, that clickiness that you know you're hitting something. Um, but other than that, it's a nice remote and it's also Bluetooth accessory to the TV. So that is the review and the showcase of the Kaisun 65 inch TV. Now this thing is actually pretty cool. The resolution is there. It looks really good at all angles in the living room. The Dolby audio also sounds really good. I'm just used to sound systems and sound bars, but it's easy to connect that as well. So the, the display is there, the audio is there. User interface is super easy. It's fun to use. You have all your applications. Everything is powered by Android TV. You also have the Chromecast built in. You have uh, your Google Assistant. You have all of this in the TV itself without having to take up all the HDMIs by other dongles and other systems and components. But that was the review. These are my thoughts. I like the TV. I'd give it a 4.7 out of five. And I'm giving it a 4.7 out of five because it sounds good, looks good. The only areas that I would mention is the remote just feels cheap, even though it's actually pretty great. So it feels cheap, sounds cheap, but it works really good. Uh, and I want maybe just one or two wattage from the speakers to be improved or increased. Other than that, this TV is actually pretty cool. So if you guys are looking to purchase this TV, I do highly recommend it. I would never recommend anything that is cheap or crappy or bad quality. So um, I've been happy with this TV for the last week and I'm sure I'm gonna be happy for longer than that. But I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.